All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 244 of the Shooter's Mind. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Jennifer Seymour is joining us. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Guest star of the hour. She's the vice president of McMillan Stocks. They've been around for quite a long time. Brittany McMillan's in the house. What's going on, Brittany? Hi, how are you? Good, good. It's good to have you on here. We're gonna You're going to teach us here about stocks because I really don't know much. All right, about it. Um, if it looks good... And it has some cool color pattern to it. I'll probably buy it just because of cool factor alone. But there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, show sponsors, the folks over at uh, Tactical Shit. All right. Shop.tacticalshit.com. We got a discount code coming from for them later on in the show. Uh, who else we got? Uh, the folks over at GSL Technologies, the world's finest suppressors. Check out gsltechnologies.com. All right. Especially if, I mean, if you're going to be shooting this game of long range or you kind of have it all, 22 guys, your pistol guys, the long range guys, or your, your like F class, like going two miles deep, they have everything for everybody over there at GSL Technologies, all right? Uh, if you want to get your questions in live, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right hand corner, you can join the conversation, uh, ask your question in there or on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. There's probably a post that just recently went up or is pinned to the top. If you prefer to use Facebook, you could plug it in the comment section. We'll get them over to Brittany throughout the show. All right, obviously, the shootersmindset.com, where you can watch all your live uh, Shooters Mindset shows. You can check out our blog section, our uh, shop. And if you want to, any kind of questions regarding training, we have a training tab up there, all at shootersmindset.com. All right. All right, let's kind of jump into this. Uh, Brittany, for those who are unfamiliar, unfamiliar with you, tell us how you kind of got in this industry. And tell us a little bit more about the company. Um, well, obviously, I got into the industry and the company through family. Uh, my grandfather started the company back in 73, um, kind of just as a hobby, as his brothers and him were shooters, competitive interest shooters, um, thought he could make something better than the Woodstock he had. Um, so it started in the, in the kitchen of my grandparents' house and uh, kind of just went on from there. Um, a lot of people think that we got our start uh, working with Marine Corps, and it wasn't too far after we started that um, we did get the original Marine Corps contract for the M40A1, but I actually started in competition, Ventrest and Long Range. Um, because it was a hobby for my grandpa, he passed it on to my dad pretty quickly. Um, and then I've kind of, you know, throughout the years, have gone back and forth between working for the company and actually by trade and by education, I'm a, an educator. Um, so I was actually in teaching and uh, principal for about nine years. Um, so I just recently came back a couple of years ago, just to come back to the family business and, you know, continue, continue what my family has started. So. You must be a saint if you were a teacher. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the thing, I don't know. I heard, I heard some rumors about modern day teaching. It's totally different now from the old school way. I tell you what. Um, yeah. And a little bit off on a tangent. Um, yes, it has. I taught and was principal at a, an ultra conservative charter school. That was just a traditional back to basics. So the classroom looked like what you, our classroom looked like growing up. We sat in rows, we faced forward, you know, we did time tests and, you know, cursive and spelling tests. So it has changed a lot, but there's a few schools out there still. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a kind of a tough thing. It's, now it's, a, it's like, you can't even, you can't even say certain, like if you slip, it's like over for you. It's like, you know, cause then they tell, they tell on you and the teacher is always a bad guy. It seems. Yeah. Oh, but that's no here, no there. We're back to stocks. All right. Uh, tell us a little bit more about, the company, though, I mean, you, you, that military contract obviously is a huge thing for, I mean, some companies just start a company just to achieve like some type of military contract of some sort because it's like, oh, you get the government money, it's the biggest bang, and there it is. And, and a lot of companies fail to do that. I mean, how does, how does your stocks get that achievement? So, again, you know, that was the first contract. That's kind of what got us on the map in terms of, being known for the quality of stocks, but if you if you know anything about the government, they don't like to spend money. Um, they and I mean a testament to our product, 
they weren't replacing our stocks every other year. You don't shoot out a stock like you shoot out a barrel. Um, so though that's probably the most well-known contract we've had, it really didn't equate to a whole lot of stocks. You know, they, they ran them for 20 years before they moved on to the M40 A5. Um, so, you know, there might, that whole contract M40 A1 might have been somewhere between 100 and 200 stocks over the course of its lifespan. So again, while it's a big, you know, big part of our history, it wasn't such a, um, it wasn't as big of a contract as most people would, would assume. Um, so that definitely didn't sustain where the business was going. Um, it helped get our name on the map. But again, we started in the competitive venturous field. And that's really where um, the bulk of our sales came from in the beginning. Um, and then we went on to, you know, introducing, hey, if we can do this in a, in a competition style stock, venture style stock, why can't this be applied to every, you know, application uh, for a bolt action rifle? So we went on to hunting. Um, and then in more recent years, you know, last 20 years or so, tactical um, ha has evolved into, you know, a whole genre of its own and so that's where our a series came from um you know over the course of the year years we we probably have over a hundred different stock models um that are available for various types of actions barrels um and inlets so uh we have a wide range in in all three we classify them in competition tactical and hunting um and you know we we have somewhere between 30 to 50 stock models and molds available in each of those categories. Um, so being able to, to reach as many uh, end users as possible is kind of what our goal was. Y'all have a lot on, when I went on the website, I was like, man, they have everything you could imagine. I mean, any mm -hmm. color scheme you want, you know, it was amazing all the different things. I didn't realize quite how many different options were out there in a stock. Yeah, a lot of people think that it's easy. Oh, I'm just going to call up and I'm going to I'm going to buy a stock. Well, we're a custom shop maker or stock <laughs> maker, custom shop. Everything's custom. So when you give us a call, we're going to ask you what seems like endless questions. Well, you as, as as the end user, you can build any rifle you want. You can be barrel, bottom metal, action, anything you want. Well, if you want your stock to fit perfect, we have to know what you have. So we ask about 17 questions um, that get very, very specific to your rifle. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know, why does that matter? Well, your cylinder length does matter if you want your stock mm -hmm. to fit properly. And so, um, a lot of people who think they know a lot about their rifles learn that they didn't know as much as they thought they did. Um, but that's what makes each of our stocks that come out of our shop unique. Um, you were talking about all the different color options, Jen, and we do. Ours are Most of our stocks that come out of here are molded in marble. Um, you have one specific that you like. Um, you're not, even if I built you one, it's not going to look just like that. Um, it's kind of like a bowling ball. Every single pattern comes out slightly different. They're all done by hand. So it's what makes them a little bit more unique. What are some of like the most, like, like if I call that, obviously I'm very novice in, in stock, like what are the most common, obviously the most important kind of questions you get that kind of people are just like, uh, well, what do you recommend? And then you're like, well, you need to know this, you know? So I um, a lot of people don't know their barrel, uh, don't know their, their specifics on their barrel. Um, they'll, a lot of times they use the cin um, Sendero. Well, there's many manufacturers who use that term. Um, and, it, and it's kind of a loose term nowadays that just because you have a Sendero, it depends on who's making that and they're not all the same. Um, so I would say that probably is what gives us the most, most, cha most challenge, um, the biggest challenge in just them understanding what they really have. Um, so we'll send out measuring kits and things like that to help them out. 
Yeah, I kind of obviously I don't know if I'm saying the right term as far as rifle stocks go, but length of pull, right? You you hear it in the shotgun all the time. Yeah, if the shotgun don't fit the end user and it's uncomfortable. You hear, always hear people, hey, well, you, you chop a inch, inch and a half off the stock and then put the rubber thing back on and then now it fits. So obviously yeah. that's kind of really important when ordering a stock. If it don't fit you, then what's the point? Exactly. I have an answer for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a couple answers. One, we'll ask you <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and we have a specific way we measure it. It's, it's, it's pretty much an industry standard of, you know, a certain length. But we'll, we'll help, our customer service reps will help that person on the phone measure that. Um, but then, like John said, we have some options for that. If you don't really know, um, we've got some accessories that will help you. You don't have to be too precise anymore. There we go. That's right. So the new stock that y'all have out is the A6. Um, and I got to shoot one of those at TPRC that um, I borrowed from Tim Milkovich because he was gracious enough to let me. Um, and I, it was like a little unicorn because everybody was coming over like, is that the A6? It is the A6, isn't it? So everyone's used to having the A5, like everybody knew that, um, but the A6 is newer. So what are the differences between the A5 and the A6? Um, they are pretty pretty similar. Um, we So we've got two versions of the A6. We have an A6, a standard adjustable A6, and we have a, um, an adjustable A6 PRS. Um, Main difference between the A6 body and the A5 is we've taken off um, and, and slimmed, I shouldn't say slimmed down, uh, leveled off the sides. Uh, we've taken that beaver tail foreign and cut off the sides. So they're parallel sides. You can, uh, you know, ride a barricade or um, something like that better. We've also taken off the texture. So it's a smooth, um, smooth surface on the sides and the bottom. Um, taken off the texture on the pistol grip. And then um, on the standard A6, we modified the butt hook slightly from the A5. Uh, difference between the A6 and the A6 PRS is the A6 PRS, we took out the butt hook. Um, so it has more of the A3 style, but a, a, a uh, smooth uh, butt without the butt hook. So those are the two major differences. I do have one. I don't know how well it'll show up on the screen um but i don't know if you can see jen the sides mm -hmm. are i liked that a lot like because on barricades i just like slammed it in the corner and it was just perfect and yeah. I was, um, the butt stock, it was funny talking about length of pull, Anthony. I got behind that rifle and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, it's the eye relief wasn't quite right and all this. And then they're like, well, we'll shorten the stock. I was like, I don't want to move his scope because I don't have the stuff to level it again. And we got to shoot tomorrow. I only had like an hour to shoot it. And they're like, oh, we'll adjust the butt stock length. So it has pieces on the um, butt stock that you can remove or put in to make it a uh, longer length of pull. So I was able to just take out a piece of the butt stock, put it back on, and then it fit me perfect. Yeah. So we call it our spacer system. Um, it's a, a, you saw it. It was a few different spacers. We have half inch and quarter inch that we put on there. It gives you about an inch and a half of adjustability in your length of pull. So you can pull off some spacers, tighten it back down. Um, if, if you're sharing rifles with people, that's helpful. Um, just like you experience, it's also great. A lot of our stocks, even though they fall into a, a category of tactical, a lot of people are using these stocks for hunting as well. Um, so if you are hunting with it and you're hunting in colder weather with, you know, heavy gear on, your, your length of pull shortens a little bit. So you're able to adjust it uh, based on what you're doing, the type of shooting you're doing as well as what you're wearing. So um, it, it's great to be able to share it between people um, and, and, and have that comfort zone for both people, uh, not feel like you're trying to just wiggle your way behind the gun as best you can. You can really get comfortable in it. Excellent. Yeah. yeah if someone's new, uh, kind of new to PRS and is looking for a stock, where would they start and what stock would be the best? Hmm. So I, I would, I would tell you start with McMillan, but we've just recently introduced a new line of stocks that we have never uh, a whole market that we've never touched before and we just started our injection molded polymer stock um 
So I would honestly tell you, we have two. We have a, a tactical stock and a hunting stock. Our tactical stock is modeled after our famous A5 uh, with just a minor difference in the design of the adjustable cheek piece. Um, but if you're just starting out, you don't know if you want to spend all the money. Um, right now, they're just made for Remington 700s, but it's a great way to, to build a good rifle um, and, you know, kind of get your feet wet to see if you enjoy it. Um, it's definitely a top-of-the-line polymer stock. It's not hollow. Uh, it's about a third of the cost of a fiberglass stock. Um, and it does not feel like a plastic stock so i would say that's the best place to start and then it's an easy transition into uh the fiberglass a5 when when you've made that commitment yeah jen your experience you, i mean you not a ton of experience but you obviously played with a few to you know more than a few different stocks and chassis i mean your thoughts on like mill and stuff uh, I had never really shot a stock uh, very much. I got to a little bit at the gap grind, but I really hadn't played a whole lot with it. Had a lot of time until I got to shoot the match in Arizona with Tim's McMillan, and I loved it. It it was very easy to balance. The rifle just balanced very easy, and yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, so there's a you just, pretty much the stability of the stock was on point versus others that you play. Yeah, with. definitely, definitely. And mm -hmm. it's amazing all the things that you can do, you know, I looked at a stock and was like, "Oh, but you can't do this, you can't do that." Uh, there's so many things you can add on to it and have on it. Um Tim had I don't remember the rail system he had underneath it. Ah, uh, he told me the name of it. But anyway, that rail system um was basically an arca rail or, 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 or or you could put the Arca rail on or take it off. It had barricade stops you could put on or take off just by sliding them on and off. Um, so there's still a lot of custom ability with, with each stock. You can put whatever on it. There we go. Yeah. Tim three guns in the, on the YouTube side, he says, uh, glad you liked my a six. It's an awesome stock. Also, he commented, you slammed his stock into a corner. <laughs> hey, it's a McMillan. It's fine, Tim. That's right. It won't get hurt. Uh, what's going on with the Guardian long range matches? Obviously, there's they're different than most. Can you explain some of this? Yeah. So the Guardian long range competition is a uh, precision rifle match, or um, I, I guess we can call it a league. We have uh, about eight matches a year. Um, what makes us different than um, NRL, PRS, is we're all charity. Um, we raise money, everything that we raise from registration, shooter registration to um, just donations, uh, prize table donations, actually our raffle table donations, all the money we raise goes to Bethany Christian Services, which is the largest um, Christian-based foster and adoption agency in the country. Um, so we raise all, all the money so far, finishing up our fifth year and we've raised I want to say about $750,000 um, and that's all gone back into Bethany making sure that kids have forever families um, we've been able to help uh, with the funds that we raised um, I think we finalized this year five adoptions um, with that funding as well as provided um, alternative medical care for some um, some some foster kids who needed some additional care um, and kept some social workers on on uh, on payroll. That's really a great cause. I, I kind of messaged you and told you it's dear to my heart because my sister actually um, adopted a brother and sister from foster care. They fostered them for, I think, about a year and a half and then adopted them and, and were forever family. So, um, yeah, it's near and dear to my heart because those are kids that, you know, they're not babies. Everybody wants to adopt a baby, but mm -hmm. it's harder when they're, you know, older children. And so anyway, it's I think it's a great cause. I've seen some of the um, videos and it just looks like a great time. It looks like y'all have a blast at them. I'm going to try and make one. I think y'all have some out east this time. We have most of them. Actually, all of our matches are out east this year, this weekend. Uh, it was the first West Coast match we've ever had. Um, so we have a match in Arizona up at Big Sandy this weekend. Um, but all of our other matches, 
uh, North Carolina. Uh, we'll have one in Georgia this year, Tennessee, Michigan, and then we'll have one in South Dakota. Um, so yeah, they are fun. They are different than um, any of the other competitive, um, we, no points. We're not, we don't work on a point system. Um, prizes, your placement does not dictate what you pull off the table. It's a raffle. Um, so we give you a pat on the back and a trophy if you're top three, great, good job. And then um, uh, you, you buy raffle tickets and then as your raffle ticket gets called, you can go pick something up off the table. And we, you know, we have a, a good size raffle table. Um, I'm totaling up Arizona's uh, raffle right now and not everything is in. And I think we're close to $50,000 worth of product um, and top of the line product. So uh, we've had people walk away with full custom rifle builds just by picking up pieces. Um, it's fun and we like, we encourage coaching. We're just, you know, we really target the new shooter um, who is a little bit nervous to get into the sport, um, especially going to a big uh, sanctioned match. Uh, so it's a good opportunity for them to get into the sport. We like, we, we allow and promote coaching on the clock. Um, so it's a good environment for new shooters. How did it get its start? How did it, uh, I mean, it's a adoption for foster children and competitive shooting. How did those two meet up and how did you get involved with it? Uh, well, I won't tell too much of Gary's story. It is for him to share and it, it's a pretty powerful story, but Gary Larson is the founder. Um, and he, he grew up in foster care. He was uh, essentially abandoned at 11 years old and was put into the foster care system up in Detroit. Um, and, you know, after being moved around from home to home he, uh, and being in the state system, he was actually put into Bethany's care um, and still was kind of moving around from home to home, just really struggled with connecting with, with a good foster family. Um, and at the age of 17, he, 17 and a half, he was getting ready to age out of the system. His plan was to go to the military. Um, he was couch surfing because him and his current foster mom at the time just didn't get along. Um, so he was just, you know, floating around from couch to couch, trying to buy time until he aged out of the system and left for the military. And his caseworker was like, I can't do this. Like I'm failing if you're not in a home. Um, so he temporarily went to stay with his caseworker and, and his wife um, while they worked at finding somewhere he could stay for the last few months. And a few weeks turned into a few more weeks into a few more weeks. Um, and just before he turned 18, uh, his, his caseworker was that basically told him, you know, this is God telling us that, that you're supposed to be a part of our family. So here you're officially part of our family. And they adopted him at 18 or I think just before he turned 18. Um, he's always had a passion for shooting. Um, so, you know, he just, kind of tried to combine the two. He was always interested in it. Um, he combined the two. He's still affiliated with Bethany. Our other uh, leadership team member, there's three of us that run um, the organization. He works for Bethany as well. Um, so that's where the connection with Bethany is. His father is now adopted father, still uh, works with Bethany as well. Awesome stuff. Where can we find more about registering for these matches and uh, any more information regarding yeah, um, all over Facebook, hopefully. If not, we'll be over there for more. Um, website is guardianlongrange.com. Uh, links to registration are on there. Um, so. Oh, there we go. We, we, you guys got a – what was that? Uh, we communicate best through Facebook and, and Instagram, of course. There you go. So go check that out. Give it a follow if you guys are interested. Also, you guys are hosting a match over in Ireland next year. That sounds exciting. Always wanted to go over to Ireland. What is it like planning an event in a foreign country? Uh, a challenge. <laughs> um, it, it's hard enough to host a match stateside. I mean, a I week can all over the country. So it's hard enough for us to help coordinate um, North Carolina or South Dakota. I'm in Arizona and hosting this match along with the match director. And it's hard enough. Um, it's a challenge. Two of us just got back from Ireland. Uh, we went the week before, week of Thanksgiving, um, just to kind of check it out. And it is going to be an amazing event. Um, but it, it's going to be a challenge. Um, gun laws 
are mm -hmm. very, very different over there. Um, and then just the whole process of transporting firearms out of the country and into Ireland. Um, but we've done a lot of research and, and it'll definitely be worth it. It's not as hard as many think, but it'll still be a challenge. Yeah, I, what, I, made I, well, go ahead, go ahead. what made y'all decide on Ireland? Um, it was honestly kind of a, kind of a joke. Um, Gary and I were just randomly talking with him. He's like, gosh, we've, as the Guardian, have grown so much this year. You know what would really, like, here's, here's like our short, short term goal next year or two. We need to go international. We should go to Europe. I just joking around. I was like, well, I've got a buddy in Ireland who, who shoots. And he's like, really? I said, yeah, let me see what I can do. And so I gave him a call and we were kind of just joking around. He's like, I think we can make this work. Um, and then we got in touch with the, the range operator there. And um, he's a great guy. He's like, absolutely. Come on over, bring everything. Uh, we've got about 60 Americans signed up already. Um, there's a real good connection between, at least especially in Arizona, um, the F-Class Arizona team and the Irish shooting team. Um, obviously being in Arizona, that helps me out a little bit. They're our friends. So there, there's a really, really strong, uh, relationship between those two organizations. So yeah, I just jumped right in on that. Um, yeah. I love Ireland. Um, yeah, no, some people looking on the outside, looking into that match like that, they're like, oh man, they, some, some people might be turned off by me, you know, jumping into registering for a match like that because they're just not, you know, it's an extra step. Not only, you know, I, I always like to go to these matches because you get to kind of, I always like to take a little vacation and then shoot the match or shoot the match and then take a little vacation at the same time. Yeah. But uh, shooting a couple pistol matches, it was actually like easier than I thought it would be getting into some of these kind of countries. Uh, Puerto Rico is, even though it's a U.S. territory, their their laws is, is, is a little bit different. There's some extra steps you have to un obtain kind of like a, it's almost like a concealed weapons license or a firearms license to go over there just to shoot a match. So the match director or the people who are inside running that match have to apply for you to get this permit, essentially, to get to go into just Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory. Um, but a lot of people get turned off just by, ah, it's, I, I, you know, ah, it's too much of a pain in the ass to get my guns over there. I don't want to deal with it, yada, yada. But that's just sometimes just not even the case. It's just almost like an extra email. Yeah, um, what we found out is it's really not hard, but you've got to have someone on the other side to help you out. Um, the range operator, JP, over at Midlands is, I mean, he does this on a regular basis. He comes over and brings his team to the States every year, and our Arizona team goes over to Ireland. So so we've got com some connections, but um, JP basically is doing a lot of the work for us. You know, when people register, we'll have, we've already sent them the form they need to complete. Um, it's an authorization as a, a visitor's permit um, that mm -hmm. the Irish police department needs to approve. Um, so we'll send them all to the range operator and he'll actually take them all down and take care of it and get them all approved. He checks them over. Um, he does it pretty regularly. Um, so it seems scary. It seems like a lot of work. It's really not, really not that bad. It's, yeah, it's not that bad. Actually, it's kind of almost the same process that I went through. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be harder getting through, honestly, it's probably going to get be harder to get through customs out of the country here than it is to get into Ireland with the paperwork. So, Yeah, exactly. Oh, so any, any live stuff popped up on the Facebook side, Jen? Nope, no, nothing yet. No. Check the Facebook side. Uh, Tim Three Gun kind of said is it, uh, it was, uh, what was it? Railworks Rail. Was it Ingenuity? Yeah. Gunworks Rail? On that, regarding to the topic mm -hmm. we were talking about. On Steph's the bottom, yeah, that's yeah. what it was, the ingenuity rail. Uh, Steph says hello to all. Thanks for watching there. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, obtaining the funds for the matches. Uh, if someone wanted to donate to the cause, how would one do so? Um, so obtaining funds, we, we're a charity. So everything we do um, is... Basically, we get range, ranges donated. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough that the ranges that we've been able to work with have all had a connection to foster care or adoption in some capacity. 
um, and they've been generous enough to essentially donate the the use of the range. Um, we so you know anything we have to pay comes out of what goes back to the kids. Um, so we try to get as much donated as possible. Uh, meals are donated uh, when we can. Um, if somebody wants to donate, um, contact us. There's a bunch of different ways. Um, anything you give because it goes to Bethany, which is a um, you know, nonprofit 501c3, um, it's a tax write off. The rifle I showed you with the A6 on it is actually the, it's a custom built uh, rifle that we have built specifically for the match this weekend. Um, a little bit on the specs. It's, it's all built in Arizona, so it's got a surgeon action, cider barrel, McMillan stock, chimney trigger. We're all right down the street from each other. Um, Owens up in Prescott put it together. So it's a one of a kind Arizona built rifle. Um, it's, a, it's a silent auction, you can, or it's an auction on um, Sunbroker, but you can essentially buy this custom rifle and write it off. Um, you'll get a receipt from Bethany Christian Services. So um, you can you can contact us and we can you know take a cash donation and you can do product donation if you're a manufacturer um anyway we'll figure out a way to get you involved excellent boom jen what do you have on your i think that's awesome that it's really good how the gun community pulls together and can do a charity match and and I've seen how giving the gun community is. So that's awesome that the ranges are giving you all the use of the range for free, because I know that takes a day or two out of their chance to make money. You know, that's their way of making money. So for them to donate, I know people are like, Oh, you're, they're just letting you use it. I mean, who cares? But that's a big deal for ranges. That's lost money for them. So for them to donate, that is really amazing. Yeah. They could easily host another match that is charging. Um, and it also, you know, the match directors are donating their time, um, which I, I'm sure you have an idea, Jen, what it takes to set up set up a match um, on the administrative side as well as you know the the labor of setting up a course of fire. So um, the fact that everyone's donating their time is is pretty remarkable. That's amazing. So just recently, I saw on the Instagram and the Facebook that you just took a class with Ray and Tyler. I did. And I saw a picture of you making a mile hit, impact at a mile. I did. How was that class? <laughs> that class was amazing. They were pretty upset with me on Sunday afternoon when everyone was freezing and I would not stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, everyone else go. Uh, we were having a hard time. Sun was going down, so it was really hard to see impacts and, and splash. And so I was like, I am not stopping. Um, I let everyone else finish shooting. I turned to Tyler. I said, I am going to try this again. We're starting over with my original correction and we're going to hit it. And we did. So it was fun. Um, gosh, for someone I've never shot before. Um, I think the month before I had shot a total of 30 rounds, had done nothing to prepare. Everyone else was dialing for me. I just pulled the trigger. Um, so a testament to Tyler's instruction, if I'm able to hit a mile after a day and a half of instruction. So it was, it was great. The instruction, uh, small classes, which was great. Um, essentially four, Tyler was the instructor, three assistants helping for 10 shooters. Um, so a lot of one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one time. Um, definitely worth it. Yeah, that's um, awesome. So are we gonna see some matches now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray has convinced me to shoot in the club match next weekend here with Regina. So we'll see. And then uh, the NRL match in February up back at Big Sandy. I have gotten a few requests to, to shoot. I'll get through the first club match and see. It's just so fun and everybody <laughs> will help you. I mean, it's people are like, I don't know if I can do that. I'm like, I showed up at my first uh, before I did Gap Grind, I went and did a club match and literally showed up with some dope written on a card. Some I had done with me, a borrowed gun. Um, I had like one rear bag and I had no other bags. I didn't know I needed them because in three gun, you're not allowed to have such things. I'm like, I need a rear bag. What? What is that? Okay. Like I literally showed up with this rifle in this rear bag and this dope card and was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and everybody was like, here, do this, try it this way. And yeah, they'll help you out. It's so fun. And I like PRS because 
I mean, it is timed, but it's not like running around like a, you know, with a pistol or, or you know, yeah. a rifle like three gun and, and USPSAR. It, it is slower. If you get up there and you only get four shots off, it's no big deal. It's better to get four shots off and actually impact something than to just pull them off. So it's a little, I hate to say it's slower paced because it's not. I mean, you do need to go fast when you get into it. But when you're just learning, you can totally go slow and not worry about it. Yeah. Um, I, I've been doing a lot of traveling the last five months, so I haven't really been able to spend much time. Um, I went to the class beginning in November or about three weeks ago. I got home and left the next day for Ireland and then have been uh, getting this match ready. So I'm hoping I can spend some time practicing. Um, once I get a little bit more comfortable, spend some more time practicing, I'm sure. I'm sure I will be a little more comfortable registering for a match. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, – that will lead us into the discount corner portion of the show, try to save you some money from some great companies who support the Shooter's Mindset show. Yeah, you usually start us off. What do you have? Yep, you can get 10% off at carbonarms.us on shotgun shell caddies, ratchet belts, extension tubes for shotguns, all kinds of stuff. So go check them out at carbonarms.us and use the um, discount code TSM10 to get 10% off. You can also get 10% off at the Shooter's Mindset store, which is shootersmindset.com. Um, we have all kinds of stuff in there, um, accessories and some different things. Go check it out, stuff from TTI. Um, you can get 10% off with the code GENTSM10. And you can also get 10% off at Under Industries um, on great jerseys, sweatshirts, jackets. And they're actually having a deal that's posted on the um, Shears Mindset page. It's, I think, through SHOT Show. And it's in it. If you get two jerseys, Anthony, you get a jacket. I need to look at it again and remember yeah, what it, it was. was but. It, was a, it, was a, it was a very good deal. Yeah. I mean, it's a really, really great deal. You need to check them out at underindustries.com. Um, or if you check out our page, we posted that a couple days, uh, about a week ago, I think. So go check that out for sure. Yeah, it was like three. It was like a jersey, uh, a jacket, and something else for like 200 bucks or less or something. I don't know. It was, I bought my fair share of jerseys, and those things can get pretty expensive kind of quick. Especially, you know, if you're shooting a lot of matches, you usually want more than one. You need I mean, two or three jerseys. And those can be a pretty hard hit in the beginning of the season to get your sponsors organized and everybody on and off and, you know, all the agreements going. And and then usually last minute, you know, everybody wants their, to wear their jersey at SHOT Show. So it's kind of like that, that, you know, big turn. You know, it's a big turnaround time with a lot of companies. It's expensive. It's kind of like you got to get the, all the logos. It's just a pain in the butt. But uh, that's a really good deal. Here we go. It's two custom three gun jerseys, which are the shooting jerseys, um, not the paintball jerseys. So two custom jerseys, one custom shooter's jacket, and one custom tech shirt for one ninety nine ninety five. So that's four things you're getting for two hundred dollars. That's pretty unheard of. That's about what two jerseys usually cost, and you'll get the shooter's jacket and the tech shirt also. So yeah, good deal for sure. Um, Excellent stuff. Uh, discounts on my end, shop.tacticalshit.com. TSM10 saves you 10% off their entire web store there. Also, if you're in the St. Peter's, Missouri area, check out their retail shop um, and yell TSM10 at the cashier. I'll save you 10% on the spot. Uh, TerranTacticalInnovations.com. Obviously, the Shooter's Mindset store can't stock all of Terran's products. So if we don't have it, check out TerranTacticalInnovations.com. TSM10 will save you 10% off their products all right also the folks over at umtactical.com they have they're really released really pretty strongly they've been pushing their their holster line so if you're into holsters or any ar-15 kind of parts uh you check out um10 umtactical.com tsm10 will save you 10 percent off over there and what else do i have i think that's about it on my end always check out the folks over at gsl technology suppressors okay we don't have a discount code but if you hit me up on the social media uh you can email me the shooters mindset at gmail.com. I'll get you connected with the right folks over there and we'll see if we can save you some money that way. All right. What else we got, Jen? Anything on your end? Anything we want to go about? Upcoming matches. All right. Uh, someone has one this weekend or any kind of upcoming events or projects going on, Brittany? Uh, we do have the Guardian match this weekend in Arizona. It's the last one for 2018. 
have a couple spots left. Um, so if you're on this side of the country and want to get in your one last match that's tax deductible before the end of the year, um, you can do that. Um, and then we don't start back up again until April. Um, and that'll be out on the East Coast. Now, any, obviously, you guys have SHOT Show planning coming around. It probably started a lot months ago. But uh, anything for SHOT Show news? Um, same place, same same spot as we ha have been since we've been in this building. We're in uh, booth 13772. Um, we have a new, brand new stock, unlike anything that we've come out before, um, that we've come out with before. So we will launch that um, at SHOT Show. Um, new project that we're working on. So we'll have that. And then, um, again, our injection molded stocks are in production now. Our tactical model will be available and you'll be able to see them on the shot show. Boom. I know Jen's going to swing by there. I'll see yep. if I make it. I doubt it. I mean, <sighs> I that. Yeah, I'm see. coming by to do a video on the new product, see, and we're going to announce it. You're going to like it. Yeah, uh, if you guys are just tuning in, we've been talking about, uh, you know, you missed a good half of the show, but a good reference is checking out the website, uh, mcmillanusa.com, all right? There's where you can find all the information about their products. I mean, you'll be kind of blown away by all the options that are available, all right? They got, we I know we've been talking a lot about the long range game here, but if you're into the kind of 22 Ruger, just want to plank, Shoot some steel challenge on that side. They have some stocks available. It's the A5 22. Oh man, tactical stocks, military style stocks. I mean, I don't know, man. They have it all. Uh, check it out over at mcmillanusa.com. All right. Anything else coming up? Let's see. Any, uh, we talked about the stock for and some of the goals. Well, what are some of the goals outside of that new stock that we're pushing for 2019 for McMillan? Um, just to continue to help grow the sport, um, our focus really for 2019, amongst some others, but uh, my focus is uh, involving more women in the sport and more youth. So helping to grow those two areas in the sport. Um, so that's where a big focus for us will be this year. Well, that's I mean, great. I have some. We need more ladies. Yeah. There we go. Anything that uh, you plan on uh, running a McMillan stock, Jen, anytime soon here? I would definitely like to, yes. Yeah, we got you got the chassis rifle all pimped out. You know, we build another one. You got to have a backup, right? You got a backup to a backup. Well, I'm getting backup. all kinds of new things, you know. It's the uh, – I'm getting the here. custom action. Yeah, that's my anniversary present. So had to get a new barrel, you know, because I shot mine out. So – New things. Time for new things. There we go. Um, anything else? Anything new that I got coming up? I will be shooting. I am registered for some uh, the South Florida Defensive Challenge here, which is in Homestead, Florida. There is a waiting list. I think the match is sold out. You know, with me, I don't sign up right away to anything. It's like, oh, you know, all my boys are like, yep, register is open. It's open at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm already asleep. No, thank you. I would wait. And then the match is sold out by the time I kind of get around to thinking I want to shoot it. Uh, I happen to squeeze into this match uh, last second. So I will be shooting the, the South Florida Defensive Challenge in Homestead, Florida at uh, Homestead Training Center. If anybody cares to come by, swing by, watch, or attend, you might have to jump on a waiting list. But it's only $100 Tier 2 match. Um, I did pretty well at my home range, what I consider a home range. So I usually do pretty good on home turf. So let's see what happens. Let's see if I can shake things up after not really doing hardcore shooting, you know, recently. I just buy guns and shoot them at indoors now. You know, I'm that type of dude now. Oh, ah. it's junk. I sell it. I'm so I just you. show up. It's like, you know, it's kind of like that Robert, uh, what, Brentling uh, attitude of things. Even though he's really good and he kind of makes it seem like he's not really doing anything to be that good. He just kind of just shows up to a match and kind of just dominates. I'm trying to, to take that on. Just try to show up to a random match. Be all and, chill, and then I'll then I'll take a little vacation, and then you won't see me for a while. That's my that's my new kind of deal. All right. I just Anything shot a, um, I just shot a twenty two match that we had here locally, a voodoo um, 
22 rimfire match. That was fun. I've never shot a 22 out to 250 yards. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. I don't have a 22, so I shared with one of the other ladies. We shared her RPR and shot it. That was really a, a well done match. It was smaller, but it was here local to me. And it was the first one that the accurate ordinance training group guys had put together and the first of that type. So it was really great. And I think they're looking to do some more of those. That was a lot of fun. Excellent. I think if we're going to round this one out here, I don't got anything live on my end. And I think we're clear on the Facebook side of things. I think we're good to kind of knock this one out here. Yep. Let's go down to shout outs. Jen, start us off. What do you got? All right. Uh, shout out to Prime Ammunition for awesome ammo. Night Force Optics. Got to have that good glass. Lansing mm -hmm. Tactical for all your gas gun needs. Under Industries. Check them out for that awesome deal on the jerseys. It's under U-N-D-R Industries. Um, so check them out on Facebook or at underindustries.com. GSL suppressors, eventually mine will get out of jail and I can play with it until then I can just look at its little jacket that it has and pretend that it's here. Um, Shooters of Augusta and Sharp Shooters of Augusta for supporting me here locally and Patriot Cases. I will give them a shout out. And I want to shout out my friend Phil Vallejo who just won the uh finale the prs finale he won it this weekend that was awesome shooting awesome yeah i mean your your, your suppressor is not at a actual range or is it just like a gun shop there's no range a part of it no i have a friend that has his ffl and can do suppressors that's like in my neighborhood around the corner oh so right? i would have to like drag him to the range with me if i did it yeah you, yeah <laughs> I mean, because I've been shooting my GSL cans for a long time on the indoor range. I just can't go home with them. But even though it's only 25-yard range, so you'll be putting it on your gun for almost photos and modeling pictures at that point because 25 yards is like throwing rocks with that gun. Right. So, uh, Brittany, we forgot to go to you about uh, discounts. I mean, any discount codes that you know of or any promotions running right now? Um, or where can we find some if we follow something? Um, we just finished up our Black Friday and Cyber Sale. Uh, we are restocking our, our inventory on our site, um, but we will have another one right before Christmas for, mm. um, for our online store. Um, we've got what we consider, what we call inlet ready stocks. So they'll be available, um, spec'd out to the most popular specs. And then all you have to do is give us your specs on your barreled action. You can get them about six to eight weeks. So we're restocking that inventory right now. And then I will let you guys know when that inventory is restocked. And we'll get you guys a promo code to, to use on there. We do. Uh, check out uh, McMillan Stocks, uh, McMillanUSA.com. Well, as soon as you go to the website, they have one of those pop-ups. Kind of punch your email in there. I'm sure that's a good way to get in there. Obviously, uh, follow them on social media. McMillan Fiberglass Stocks is a good way to kind of punch that in the search and get all their social media to pop up. Um, lastly, let me get some of my shout outs. Actually, we'll start off with you, Brittany. What do you got uh, as far as shout outs going? Um, you know, I just want to give a shout out to the couple of people who have helped me put together my first rifle. Um, so I'm running an OSS suppressor. Um, they're a sponsor of the guardian and, and helped us out. Um, I have a new, the new Borden's, um, Mountaineer action that they just came out with. Um, and of course I've got a Timmy trigger in there. So I appreciate these guys for helping us out and getting me started into, into the sport. Excellent stuff. Had a last minute question here come in from G Greg Cannon talking about, uh, the G18 I shot on posted up on social media. That is actually a Glock 17 converted. So it's whatever it's, it's full auto Glock. Um, if you're in the South Florida area, come by swing by Pembroke gun and range. We usually don't. We do rent that gun. We just have it in a chassis like a Rooney kit or some type of, of chassis because it is kind of hard to control if you are kind of a rookie or fairly novice in the game. That thing can really hit everything else but the target if you don't control it, right? So we usually do rent it in a chassis. It's still a lot of fun. Um, it goes through 30, 33 rounds of 9 millimeter like nothing. Um, but if you're in the South Florida area, swing by Pember Gun and Range. We'll get that gun rented out to you. It's a lot of fun. Nine millimeters cheap. Um, but that's the story. It's a lot of 
I don't know. I take it. I, I do silly things. I shoot Uzis from the hip just for, you know, for it. I saw it in a movie. I want to do it. Or, you know, Chuck Norris comes to mind, stuff like that. You do it All for right, the gram. So, yeah, we're doing stuff for the grams. I will have an Uzi from the hip kind of gangster mafia style coming out of short video soon. We'll do some slow-mo. I love the Uzi. One of my favorite autos to shoot. Uh, so if you're curious on that, that's what it is. Uh, shout out to my end. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, the shooters mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Uh, definitely. Thanks to Brittany for taking two hours of her time here to share uh, her side of the McMillan stocks. Excellent. I, I enjoyed it. I learned a lot folks over at Tandem Cross. All right. For all your uh, 22 needs, a lot of parts over there. If you have that old 1022, you want to hook up, Check out tandemcross.com. Folks over at Tactical Ship for their continuous support of the Shooter's Mindset Show. We really appreciate it. If you're watching on the YouTube side of things, right below the video, you see a yellow button. That's the subscribe button. Hit that every Tuesday at 9 Eastern. We got a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset Show. And uh, that will do it for episode 244 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We're out of here. <laughs>